guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Arctic. Today, we're getting back into some more FTB Skies. Oh boy, we're gonna get some automation done. Hopefully, you guys are ready. Now, today, I have high hopes, high hopes, for getting this process set up and automated. So, we don't have to do it by hand for long. Now, at the moment, I am currently working on getting uh, this all turned into dust, and uh, but, but we should be able to easily easily within today's episode uh finally get this set up now the reason i'm working towards dust is because instead of we're getting started we're moving into a new section where we're going to be getting uh into the material generator from the pedestals mod and to get lava which we need for this process we're going to need a fair bit of blaze and uh to get the blaze powder well we do it this way we uh turn our sand into <laughs> we turn our sand into dust and then we just simply use our setup that we made last episode and we sieve the dust and that should get us blaze powder. Now the materials you see in here, I got this from sifting leaves uh, in which I sheared over here. But yes, we should get that. We also get bone mill, uh, gunpowder and a bunch of other useful, useful uh, tools. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab the rest of the sand actually, because I'm going to go ahead and use it to try and get myself some more kelp if at all possible. Now, while things are processing up, let's talk about the squeezer. It looks like it requires a block of iron, so we're also going to need to sieve gravel for a little bit. The squeezer will allow us to squeeze out all of the lava out of the uh, blaze powder and uh, put it into the tank that we're just going to get given, which is very, very handy. Now, the way I've been getting gravel up to this point has been through this method. By holding down shift and just right clicking on some dirt or grass, I am able to gather a little bit, but there is diminishing returns. You can't do this forever, right? You're going to have to upgrade at some point. And uh, today we're getting into those pedestals. Now, while this is all processing up, let's not forget about our bee, our fantastic bee that we have over here. And I asked you guys in the comments to let me know what to name it. And you guys definitely came into clutch. Uh, with so many awesome responses, uh, but one stood out, and I absolutely love this, and it's from the only Taz, and it says, let's call the bee Beereth, uh, to thank Sarah for the amazing mod pack. So, uh, thank you. Thank you for so much for, for recommending that. Totally, Beereth is going to be the name. I love it. Now, once I have name tags, I can, of course, officiate everything, including Ron over here, uh, but for right now, this will have to do, just keep it in your memory, just like I'll keep mine in the memory. Now, all my iron is ready to go. We just need one more thing uh, to really get us nice and prepped up for getting the pedestals. Uh, so we have that going. I should go ahead and just go get the rest of this gravel sifted up. But the sand is going to get us sugar cane. Yes, good old classic sugar cane. And we can place that right here, but if you know, sugar cane takes a while to grow. But we can actually accelerate this, believe it or not, with bone mill. I know, it's cursed, but it's cool. So <laughs> the fact that we can do this is pretty awesome and uh, saves us a whole lot of time when it comes to getting books, which we're going to need here in the future. So at this point, we have everything we need to make the squeezer. So let's put the squeezer together. And uh, we definitely want to accept our quest because that's pretty important, right? We get the tank that we're actually going to need in order to pick up the lava that we are going to get. So this is all ready to go. We have enough blaze powder now to get started with this. And of course it tells you everything right here. Uh, and then we also have this pointed dripstone it talks about uh, with getting lava. And then uh, it also brings us into the pedestals and uh, the material generator. All very, very important. And uh, the, the reason we need lava, right, is because the material generator to get this upgrade requires a bucket of lava and a bucket of water. Now to operate things successfully, let's go ahead and place our tank down and then we'll place our squeezer. Notice the flow line right here, the little line that goes down the middle. You wanna make sure that that line is facing into your tank. So if you place it the other way and it didn't connect and it's not working, that might be why. Um, but we're also gonna need ourselves a regular pressure plate as well. The way this works is you jump on it and it squeezes. And then whenever it's done squeezing, you can reset this with a redstone signal. So you don't have to use a pressure plate, you can use a button or a lever or what have you, but you do have to give it a signal. Now, to get it going, we just place this in here, and with that tank behind, once we've stomped on this enough, I still think like 
having some sound effects in here. Really, really good. Bloop, bloop, bloop. There we go. We have our lava. And then I usually just walk back and it resets place and go again. Now, we're going to need four. It looks like four blaze powder to do this because we only get a quarter of a bucket of lava each time. So squeak, squeak, squeak. Bloop, 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 bloop. There we go. We already have a half a bucket of lava. And uh, we just keep repeating this until we have a full bucket. We're going to have to do this a few times. A few times. So uh, once we get the initial setup going, though, it won't be as tedious. We won't have to click the ground anymore uh, to get our bucket of lava. Uh, I will be needing another bucket. Thankfully, buckets don't get consumed whenever you craft with recipes most of the time. And I think I have a... Uh, oh, yeah, my bucket of water inside my, my tool bag. My force bag. So here we go. Boop. And we now have lava and we get some dripstone for free. And this is kind of nice because we can now take some of the iron and make a cauldron. And then we can get a technically a renewable source of lava. We don't have to do this over and over again. Now, consider this a bit of an investment, uh, investing your iron into this, because like I said, it will save you some time in the long run. And you're going to really, really want this. Um, so we can go ahead and place this here. Let's get ourselves a block underneath, like so. And what we'll have is the lava on top of this and a dripstone on the bottom. That's going to drip into the cauldron and it's going to provide us with lava, which is going to be really, really handy. Um, and then we can just place something up here so that way we can get our trap doors. It's super simple to set trap doors to hold your lava. I don't know. It's something about something about these magical trap doors, right? They don't catch on fire. <laughs> Surprising, right? But uh, yeah, you can go ahead and get our lava placed right in here. You can close the trap doors up, make it look nice and neat. And there we go. So over time, this will just generate another bucket of lava. And it doesn't take all that much time. Now I'm going to need a knife. Yes. A knife. <laughs> Uh, but I'm gonna I promise I promise I'm gonna use this in good ways, right? We're gonna use this on a cutting board consider it more of a kitchen knife uh, Sort of thing now the reason I need this cutting board uh, which we're gonna set up right here We can also grab I believe I have a hopper laying around Potentially or I've used them all uh, We are gonna need a wooden hopper. So let's go ahead and make a simple wooden hopper These are so easy to make by the way and I totally suggest these wooden hoppers over normal hoppers because of how fast they are. Uh, but we have that set up. Let's go ahead and get a chest put on top of this. And I'll show you a simple way to make the uh, cutting board a lot faster. So here's our cutting board and here's our knife. Now, the reason we need the cutting board and knife is because we need to get this ingredient called straw. And I think we already have some straw, but uh, this will make making books a little bit easier. We can take this straw and turn it into canvas, right? Uh, but to get straw, well, it's pretty simple. We actually get some rice, uh, and we can go ahead and place this inside here, and we can use this to chop it up. And see how fast that hopper sends the items out? It's insane how fast it is. And we're gonna probably make use of this cutting board a lot. Now, don't use up all of your straw because you're gonna want some straw for this organic compost. Now, if you do run out of straw and you have crafted it all up, well, you're not out of luck because you can actually get straw with the knife by chopping down tall versions of the grass. As you can see, I just got an extra piece of straw. Ah, nothing like cursed sugarcane. Of course, we're going to need all of this sugarcane in order to make some paper. And uh, we need at least one bookshelf. So we're moving into this mod, the pedestals mod. And believe me, it's more than just an, a, a place to, to store your items for good looks. Uh, it can definitely store items. It can do tons of things. But uh, we're going to be using it right now to generate cobblestone generators because we want to automate the sifter today. So with all that paper and that now canvas, we don't have to worry about leather and we can make three books because we need a single bookshelf. To get started, to make the linking tool itself, you have this little information uh, guide here. So in our offhand, we need some sort of gem. Now, thankfully, gems can be lapis, and we do have lapis. You don't have to use diamonds for this. And then we also need some sort of rod, which can be a stick. Um, so let's go ahead and combine those things. We can place down our bookshelf, grab some lapis, which we put in our offhand, right? And then a stick goes in our main hand, and then we just use them together and we get ourselves a rod. Now, thankfully, we actually get another bookshelf because we're going to need another bookshelf 
to make another tool. Uh, the pedestals mod actually has two different tools. We have a linking tool and we have an upgrade tool and these other tools uh, I'll basically be rotated in and out. And uh, to do that, we just shift right clicking and you see the rods actually change. Now the other tool is simply gold in your offhand and a stick and boop, there we go. We have our other tool. Now we do need to make the pedestal and the reason we need both of these tools is because the to make the pedestals themselves, you need the regular linking tool and to make any of the upgrades, you are going to need the upgrade tool. So with everything I need ready to go, let's go ahead and make some slabs and uh, go ahead and get our first pedestal made. Now, this is our first pedestal, but we are going to also need that upgrade, right? And uh, that is going to be the material generator. And that is going to require a bucket of lava. And so let's grab both of our buckets. We need a bucket of lava and water. And as you can see, we did have lava in there. Very nice. That had generated over a little bit of time. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and make this. There we go. Material generator. And uh, this is super helpful. This tool right here has a ton of things it can generate. And you can do that by seeing the use key by hitting U over it. And you can uh, pop into here and you can see the block of coal generates blackstone and sandstone generates sand very important to know gravel makes gravel uh, stone makes cobblestone so all these things are incredibly important to know now by default if you put cobblestone under or put stone underneath it it's it's okay right i think that's okay but we actually want i believe right off the bat i think putting gravel underneath it might be a better choice so this is gravel and if i place this pedestal here uh, and then we place the upgrade in the offhand because to apply upgrades, you need them in your offhand. Uh, and then to be able to get them off, you need something, you need an upgrade in your offhand and you need to punch it to get it off. But uh, we are going to be right clicking this onto the pedestal. And as you can see, that's going to start generating uh, gravel. And this kind of works like the old barrels, right? It does store up to 64 by default. It stores uh, a little bit of gravel in here and we can pull that out uh, by punching, right? And then shift punching pulls the whole stack. Uh, and then if you right click, it tells you how much is in there. Uh, now, we basically have gravel now that we can just toss in here. This is not exactly the automation that I want to set up. Uh, we are going to need to work towards getting multiple pedestals. And uh, I think we're going to also need to invest in a cool upgrade, a cool upgrade that is a part of this pack that uh, is actually a part of the FTB mod. Uh, and that is going to be an auto hammer. Now, at the moment, we can get gravel, we can get sand, and uh, we don't have a way of getting dust automatically because there's nothing that just produces dust. The material generator doesn't do this. So what we're going to need is another pedestal to make dust. And then we'll have all three of the basic materials going. Now, we can also generate dirt with the pedestal. So we're going to need a dirt pedestal. And uh, that one is actually interesting to make. Remember earlier I mentioned do not use all of the uh, the straw that you got. That's because you can make organic compost and this going underneath the pedestal will generate dirt. Now with completing this, we do get an export upgrade and we get some augments on capacity. We get ourselves another pedestal, a barrel and a piece of stone if you didn't have one to put underneath here. Of course, in my example, I am putting gravel because I don't want to have to go through the first process of turning this into another material. But if you want to use it for building, of course, cobble is great for building, right? Now, while some gravel is processing, I'm going to go ahead and make myself a little pond of such. And uh, we're actually going to get an auto fisher set up here. But this is also going to be a good place where we can grow some kelp. Because I am going to be using Create early on to simplify the automation process of all of our early game resources. Now, it is night and it is starting to rain. Now, one of the quest lines actually help you out with this. Now, when I set up my bed, and I made my bed right over here, we actually get access to quite a few things, but underneath the bed part, we get a rain shield. And uh, this is kind of handy because we should be able to place this somewhere in our base. Uh, how about right here? And this is going to just stop the rain in our area. And like, pretty cool, right? We don't have to worry about the rain anymore. Now to fill an area like this with water, it's probably best just to go ahead and, and place down a solid floor and then this will actually fill itself in once you get enough water placed in and then you just remove the bottom floor making sure it's a something that can be vein mined and so once we have it vein mined then this whole bottom area then becomes nice and filled 
and we get ourselves a little bit of a pond. Now, while working on everything and getting our pond set up, uh, I decided uh, to kind of switch this up because I've been putting a bunch of gravel through. We have a lot of gravel. I want to switch this up to sand for right now. Uh, and this is going to get us more of the sand resources. Now, I can't do dust just yet, uh, but to get the sand going, we basically take our sandstone here, we make the slabs, and then we turn this into chiseled sandstone. And we only need one chiseled sandstone underneath here in order to start producing sand, as you can see. So let's go ahead and make that fishing rod. And there we go. Inside of our quest, we actually get a fishing net and a splash potion of luck, which could be helpful for fishing things up early on. Now, the fishing net can go right here inside the water. Um, and I'm actually going to, let's see, place it right here in the middle and place the fishing net, I believe, right here. And I think it can be above the water, a little bit exposed. Um, and I think that's how it will work. Uh, however, it does spit the items sort of up into the air. Uh, let's also grab a bucket of water so it has a block underneath it. Um, and there is a way that we can technically catch all these items. And it does mention it in the quest. So we put this in here, and that is going to use that. And we have a way to control with some redstone. But this kind of like throws the uh, the items out. Like it actually fishes them as if it's a person. Um, and so we need a way to collect that. And now inside here, it does mention using an item collector as a way to do that. And it's not too bad. It's just a flint block and a few hoppers, which we definitely have the iron for now. Oh, and if you're wondering the best way to get flint, well, you're going to need yourself a little bit of gravel and a squeezer. And this will be honestly the best way to get flint as it should guarantee one. And just like that, we have one of our first machines, and it's from one of my favorite mods of all time. Of course, you can see right here, though, we're already getting fish. Um, and let me see. We're going to have to turn this around and get it facing the other direction. Let's get it facing this way. And uh, make sure we show the preview so we can actually see where it is collecting. I think that is a little bit too big, so you can actually mouse and scroll wheel. You can see like this. And also raise the height or lower the height. I'm going to set it to right about here. And you can see that's a pretty decent size for it. Um, and it has an internal buffer. So we don't need to worry about the uh, the internals for a little while. You can see there's fish down here. We might want to collect those. And we might need to increase the range to go down a little bit. It does seem like that's the case. Let's go ahead and raise the height. And when it's raising the height, it's actually lowering it. And there we go. That should be plenty. And should totally catch all of these fish. Now for completing the item collector itself, we get a really nice fishing rod that I don't know if I want to use in that because it does have mending on it. We also get a void upgrade and some free ink sacks, which is fantastic. Now this is the moment of truth. This is the point for which we are going to continue to generate a ton of resources and this pack is really going to explode. Uh, now, at this point, I need andesite, and I'm going to need a little bit of this because we are going to be using a little bit of create for this automation. And so if we take some polished andesite, uh, I should start to generate now a little bit of andesite. And I'm going to need this in combination with some iron to make andesite alloy for all of the, the new things that we're going to be working towards. So I have some shafts. We also have a bunch of kelp that is in here. And if you know a little bit about create, you will know that we need to take this kelp and we need to smelt quite a bit of it uh, because we're going to be using this for belts and uh, many other things. So with my chest placed down, we have just about everything ready to go. I have some belts made up. Let's get started with our automation. So to start off, I have some shafts here that we are going to place down. And we're going to connect that together with some belts. This is going to send the items into our chest and pull the items out of our sifters. Uh, so if I have my sifters setting here... Uh, and we'll give them power with uh, some sort of water wheel, which we're going to end up doing. I'll, I'll leave these blocks down here for right now. We should be fine. Now, on the back here, we're going to actually have some pedestals that are on the back. And up front, we are going to have our pedestals that generate our resources. Uh, so we will take these pedestals and we are going to use extract upgrades in which I am going to make or export upgrades. And that should export and send the items from here into this while also leaving us with extra to be able to pull out of these when needed. Um, so this won't use all of the resources, so we'll end up with a stack building up in here. 
and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. We're going to get this set up. But first, let's get this uh, set up as a proof of concept, right? Now, now that we have this going, andesite tunnels can go here and on the back of our chest, allowing this to go in. In the future, I think on our chest, we'll go with something different. We'll probably have this go into some sort of storage network. But this allows us to set up expansions. Um, and uh, all we have to do now is get our setup going with a cog, right? We're gonna have to have a cog here and we can get a water wheel or something set up down below to get this spinning. Now we'll most likely need some gearboxes and if you're confused on how to get those, it's as simple as stripping the logs and taking some of that andesite alloy that you have laying, or, laying about by this point and just gathering some. There you go, andesite casings for the win. So the water wheel is going in and you can see the fins and you kind of can get an idea of what direction the water needs to go in order to get the most bang for your buck. Um, and in this case, I'm going to set up a gearbox. So I'm gonna use a vertical gearbox. Now this should get this rotating up top, but we need to make sure that this is going to spin the belts in the proper direction. For this, we can use another one. Now you see this is going the opposite direction. So what I'm gonna need to do to utilize this same setup is I'm actually going to need to swap the direction of the water wheel. To do this, I can hold down shift when I place it, and that will change the direction that this is spinning and changing the rotation. Uh, pretty simple way to do this uh, early on, I think. And now this will get the belts spinning in the proper direction. It's a little bit of rotational power here, not too much to wrap your head around. I think the hardest part is going to be understanding how these pedestals work. So if you remember from earlier, I mentioned getting into these auto hammers and we're gonna need one for that dust. Um, now, this is going to change the way we set this up. So I think right now we'll have gravel, sand, dust, um, and then we'll also have the waterlogged sand over here, but this will probably end up being changed to dirt. And I, I, I don't know, I, I still want waterlogged sand um, for the clay reasons, right? Because we can get plenty of clay that way. But let's go ahead and change this up so that it'll work with the dust. So I'm thinking that I should be able to put the items in from the top, um, but I need this to have the blue on this side. And if it's if it doesn't work on the top, uh, I guess I could always make sure to put it on the back here. And that still should be enough reach on the pedestals to get to where I want it to be. Um, now, underneath these blocks, we definitely want to get those changed up because we don't want it producing any items just yet. Um, we do want to tell it though, what it is going to be producing. So of course, gravel and remember sand will have another option for this to be turning into dust. And then we'll have another sand over here. So really we're going to be using this, uh, gravel underneath this one to produce gravel and then sand underneath that one to produce sand. This one's also going to be sand and this one's also going to be sand for right now. We just need to waterlog this particular sifter. So I think all is just about ready to go. I mean, this is almost ready to be fired on. Now, to put this in our offhand quickly, you can hit F, and that'll allow you to, to put that in your offhand very, very quick. And that will get all of those going. Now, we also need these export upgrades. By default, they're actually import upgrades you make, but we are turning these into export upgrades. And uh, these don't work exactly by themselves. You do have to specify how they're going to work. But we're gonna fill these with those export upgrades. And this will allow us to get the items from that pedestal to this pedestal. And it will kind of work as a hopper that is sort of wireless. It's pretty cool how it actually functions. All right, so with that, this is where our linking tool is going to come into play. And what we're gonna say is, hey pedestal, tell me where you're going to pull the items from. And so we'll shift right click on this pedestal and then we'll link it by shift right clicking to this pedestal. And what should happen is it should then pull the gravel from this pedestal and send it into an inventory. And uh, any side, by the way, I just did it wrong, right? I just, well, I, t I guess you can do it this way. It does work back and forth, I guess, automatically knows. Um, but I will go ahead and remove that just to make sure it's all linked up properly. Um, but yeah, we can shift right click here and tell it where it is going to work. If you wanna do the opposite of this, you can go to the backwards linking tool and you can select and then tell it where it's gonna go. Um, so back and forth. But yeah, as you can see, these are now functioning, right? And this kind of works as a, it'll, like it'll, any side that you put it on, if this was an inventory, 
this would automatically send the items into it. Very handy. Very, very cool. And the same thing is going to happen over here. I'm going to say, hey, where are you going to go? Pull the items from, and it's going to pull the items from there. Same on this. And there we go. And so this should... Yeah, this should automatically take the items, which is going to be sand, and then it's going to crush it into dust, and then we get our dust processing. And as you can see, the items should just be flowing out into the chests. And this is going to overflow incredibly fast because this is incredibly efficient. Now, it may not be much, but it's a little bit of a build. A little bit. Um, so, I just basically surrounded it with a little bit of oak log, got the roof in, used some of that anisite that I had, and it just used some basic resources. Later on, we're going to have way better resources to make this look a lot better. Uh, but for getting started, I think this is perfect and gives me room to expand to add another chest over here and over here because we are going to need netherrack eventually to be crushed and we're also going to need dirt processed. Now with all this set up, it's time to ask you the question of today. And uh, that question of the day is going to be, what Skyblock mod pack has been your favorite that you have played thus far? Let me know down in the comments below and I would love I would love to see what you guys have to say. And of course, it's also that time where we give a huge shout out to the supporter of today's video. And that is going to be a huge thanks going over to JRO. Thank you so much for supporting in one of the best ways possible, guys. Supporting me over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, be sure, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And of course, follow me over on Twitch and Twitter if you would be so kind. Guys, I hope you enjoyed. I hope to see you in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching. All right, all right, all right. All right. I have a good one for you. Why can't Ender Dragons read books? Because she always starts at the end. Oh, it's such a good one.